this video I'm going to show you how to do a phenol chloroform isoamyl extraction and precipitation of your DNA. What we're, what we're going to do here is do a PCR purification. You could use the same procedure though to clean up DNA from any number of applications. You could use it to clean up uh, freeze and squeeze, a freeze and squeeze gel extraction. You could use it to clean up uh, restriction enzyme digest or any other, any kind of uh, enzyme reaction that you would like to clean up. So here we have a 10 microliter PCR. Uh, we're going we're gonna to clean that up with uh, PCI extraction. So we're going to do a few things here. So this is a 10 microliter reaction. For best results, we're going to not ever go below 20 microliter uh, phenol chloroform isoamyl wax extraction because uh, it becomes hard to pipette such a little volume and the amount that you leave behind it ends up being significant. So say I leave, leave um, two or three microliters behind from the extraction, that's 20 or 30 percent of our DNA. We can reduce that loss um, by, uh, by half by increasing the volume to 10, 20 microliters. You can certainly do extractions of 200 or even 200 microliters or one mil as well. I'm going to add some water. Bring the volume to 20 microliters. I'm going to add a few other things too. So we have to add um, sodium acetate. I have three molar sodium acetate. I'm going to add some of that. Sodium acetate will make the DNA precipitate when we get to the uh, isopropanol precipitation. A lot of protocols call for adding the sodium acetate after the um, after you take the upper phase of the PCI extraction. I prefer to do it first. This way, you have a slightly better recovery of DNA. Um, I'm also going to add linear polyacrylamide. I highly recommend adding linear polyacrylamide to any time you do a precipitation because it will just greatly increase the recovery of your nucleic acids. And at the same time, it'll make it really easy to see a pellet. You could even be trying to precipitate picogram amounts of DNA, and you would be able to see the pellet and not be in risk of losing your pellet. I'll show you what that means later on. Anyway, I'll just give this a quick vortex. Now we'll go add our phenol chloroform. So most protocols that I've seen for PCI extraction call for adding an equal amount of um, PC, PCI to your um, aqueous solution. I have found that using a tenth of a volume will give us better results. So I'm just going to add a little bit more than two microliters here. get better recovery of DNA with using two microliters and get great purity and we also generate a lot less waste. Instead of having 20 microliters of uh, PCI waste, we would have only two microliters of PCI waste. And then, the best thing to do at this point is to shake it by hand. Shake it for five or ten seconds. You can vortex as well, but shaking by hand seems to do a better job of of mixing up the two phases, the organic phase and the aqueous phase. I don't know if we can see that here. I'm gonna get the camera in here. So it should look like a milky color. It should not look clear. That means you've done a good job of mixing the phases. Okay. Now we're gonna spin this down for 30 seconds. Thirty seconds at maximum speed. The centrifuge that's sixteen thousand times G. Come back when it's done. All right, thirty seconds is up. And what we can see here, let's get the camera in close. As you can see, we have two phases now. 
we have a clear upper face and we have a, a small amount of um, less clear um, uh, PCI face. What we're trying to do, what we're going to try to do is get just the aqueous phase. By using a small amount of phenol chloroform isoamyl alcohol, PCI, I should just say PCI, um, we, make, we make the organic phase at the bottom of the tube where, it's, um, where the tube is very um, narrow. That makes it a lot easier to recover a little bit more DNA. You know what your theoretical volume of DNA um, should be? And your goal here is to take the aqueous phase without taking any of the inner phase or the, uh, or the organic phase on the bottom. Maybe let's get the camera on the other side. It's not going to be easy to show this because I have to, the tube is small. And we're going to pipette from the top and slowly lower the tip down. And you see that's all clear, clear stuff. We didn't get any of the organic phase or interface. I'm going to get even just a little bit more. Why not? And that's good enough. I'm not going to risk. I'm not going to risk purity. Transfer that to another tube. Now this is this goes into our unwanted. We have to work in the hood for those, for those nasty things. Now what we're going to want to do is figure out exact the exact volume of this. I have about 24 microliters here. I'm going to double check that. It's okay to be off by one microliter or so. But yeah, I have about 24 microliters, so I was right on that. Now we now we want to add isopropanol. We're going to add 0.6 volumes of isopropanol. So we had 24 microliters, means we got to add 14.4 microliters of isopropanol. I've empirically found that 0.6 volumes of isopropanol gives the highest purity of um, nucleic acid. And it allows you to eliminate small things like primers or degraded RNA, but still gives excellent precipitation of larger pieces of DNA uh, in the you know 500 micro, uh, 500 base pair and up range. A lot of protocols will call for an equal volume of isopropanol. That will do a really good job of precipitating the little stuff like degraded RNA or, uh, or primers, leftover primers in the reaction that you may not want. Or there are cases where you might want that. Now we just give this a quick vortex. An isopropanol pellet is going to be really, really hard to see, and I don't know if it'll come out on this video at all. It's going to be a very jelly, jelly clear-like thing, like jellyfish. Um, if you hold it up to the light and rotate your tube, you'll probably be able to see it. So I can see it in my eyes right, right here. I'm going to try to hold it up to the light. We should be looking at at that light. Anyway, you know what your side of the tube the pellet is on. I always put the, the hinge to the outside of the centrifuge, so I know the pellet needs to be on that side. I'm going to carefully 
bit away the supernatant. By holding the pellet so it's down. Pellet is gonna be down and I'm gonna I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna pipette from the opposite side of the wall. Opposite side of the hinge and slowly pipette down. The goal is not to get every last drop out. The better, the more you get out, the better. Just make sure you're not taking the pellet away. It's pretty hard actually to lose the pellet in this procedure. And we'll wash that pellet real quick with 70% um, ethanol. It's desirable to wash with as much ethanol as will fit in the tube. We would want to use at least 10 times our volume. The tube is a 500 mic microliter tube, so I'm going to put 500 microliters there. Close that up, and I'm going to gently invert this a few times. And now you'll be able to see the pellet very clearly. So we can go against the bench now and invert it a few more times. The pellet starts to turn white once we have ice um, ethanol in there. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, it's very easy to see. see Super easy to see. And this is because we have a fair amount of DNA from the PCR product, but also because we have linear polyacrylamide. This is one of the reasons to always use linear polyacrylamide. It will carry your DNA with it into that pellet, and it's also easy to see. So you can be absolutely sure that we don't lose our pellet. We can give it a... We can give this a... 30 second spin. It doesn't have to be 30 seconds, it could be 10 second spin. We're gonna cut that away the 70% ethanol. We washed our pellet, washed away those other salts and everything. And residual. So again, I'm going to hold the pellet. You can see the pellet very clearly there, but I'm going to hold the pellet down and pipette from the opposite side. It's desirable to move the pipette slowly downwards until you get closer to the pellet. Get rid of that. Now this is important, so I'm going to do a real brief spin here. seconds or so. That's going to get all of those droplets of ethanol to the bottom of the tube where we can get rid of them. You can see we have collected our droplets. There's, our, there's still our pellet there. And we collected all those droplets in the bottom of the tube. And I'm going to the same technique. I'm going to pipe that. And I can actually press this tip all the way to the bottom as long as it's not jammed into the pellet and make sure all the ethanol is out. If you have any droplets on the side of the tube, you can use the pipette tip to, to gently move them toward the top of the tube, toward the mouth of the tube. Now we have a pellet in there. I'm gonna put this in this rack. I'm gonna put this on its side for one minute to dry a little bit more. And then you're gonna put your desired amount of Tris buffer or TA, TE buffer or water if, if you want that in there and uh, vortex to resuspend it. And that's it. This method, this method is super scalable. You could use, you could precipitate as little as one picogram of DNA and you can certainly uh, precipitate microgram quantities or even milligram quantities of DNA by this method. It gives excellent purity. Um, it can be used in a, virtually any application. Anyway, thank you for watching.